Welcome to the Social Regressive. Today we are going to be putting together the Scout AR-15, so I'll try to be a little bit quicker than usual. We're going to go through the tools first. We have the Weaver Torque Wrench back here. We have an Armorer's Vice Block for the upper, for the lower. Over here we have an Automotive Beam Type Torque Wrench. This is going to be used to attach some of our larger parts. We have the DPMS Armorer's Wrench, Ratcheting Screwdriver, Bits, uh, Allen keys, white lithium grease, and then over here we have the Modern Spartan System starter kit. This is going to have all kinds of lubes and cleaners that we're going to be using throughout this whole build. Uh, this has some really neat stuff in it, and I expect that the oil, especially inside here, is going to be a, a really neat choice for this rifle, and we're going to test it out over time. Thanks a bunch to the manufacturers that have provided a bunch of the parts for this rifle, and also thank you to Sportsman's Guide and Peter, our patrons of the Destructive Arts. Uh, you guys are helping to keep these videos coming, and if anybody else wants to chip in a buck or two a month to keep videos like these coming, then I'll put a link to Patreon. Let's get building! We're going to assemble the lower first. I have a whole video that describes all the various parts that you see here on the table. I'm going to gloss over it here in this video. If you want to see each individual part, you can look back at that one. I'll also have a list of most of everything down in the description below. There's going to be one notable absence today. I'm not going to put in the Rise Armament RA140 SST trigger yet because this is such a cool trigger. I want to do it in its own video and show the, the trigger pull using a gauge. Partly install the slide stop roll pin. I'm coating all of my springs in Spartan Accuracy Oil. <laughs> then put in the spring, the detent, and the slide stop itself. Drive the pin all the way through. Mag catch. The mag catch is pretty easy to install. Just put in the mag catch itself. On the other side, put the spring and then the button. And you can start screwing the button on right away, but it's only going to go so far. To get it all the way in, you're going to have to use a punch or a pen or something like that. Push on that pin. So you're kind of pushing the button all the way in, and then you spin the mag catch around until it gets to a good point. Basically, you want the screw to be flush with the surface of the button. Never mind what I said earlier, we're gonna go ahead and put the Rise Armament RA140 SST trigger in there. I forget sometimes how interconnected all these parts are, and leaving one out can be a real pain in the neck. So we're just gonna go ahead and drop it in, but we will do a feature on this trigger a little bit later. This is a fabulous trigger. Three and a half pounds, no creep. Uh, I am not fooling. I'm a real trigger snob, and this thing is out of this world. We're using KNS Precision pins. These screw into place. They are anti rotation, anti walk, anti everything. One of the pins has flat sides and is not threaded. So this is the one that will go through where the hammer pin usually goes. All right, so there's that. This threaded one goes to the rear. I need to get a brass or plastic hammer, but for now this will work. There we go, nice and flush. That was just a 38 special case. These screws have a little bit of thread locker on there, and these need to be tightened down to eight pound inches up to a maximum of 11. So I'm just gonna stick right at that lower end. The AR-15 is a puzzle that you really have to put together in the right order, and I was just about to put the grip on when I remembered that there are some things kind of hidden under here. So what we have to do now is install the safety selector. Okay, I got that in place on the safe position. And then with this pushed all the way through, this is the detent for that, so I'm just going to drop it in that hole. And then this spring is going to push on that, and this kind of goes inside the grip right here. So this is the ATI X2 grip. It does not actually come with the screw that you need to attach it, 
so you might want to pull one off an old A2 grip you have or make sure that you order one if you do get one of these grips. So that just goes right inside right there. And then you can install the grip and it is a pretty tight fit. Let's get those lined up. There we go. This is the rubber part of the X2 grip. This just slides into a little track in here and it fits very snugly. And then to cap it all off, it just comes with one little screw you install up here. The rear takedown pin works along similar lines. You just push it in like this, making sure that the channel that you see cut right there is facing toward the back of the gun. And then we're going to put uh, the little pin, a little detent inside there, and then a spring, and then all of this will be cinched down by the buttstock. Before I start screwing the buffer tube in, I'm just going to go ahead and take this spring out first. I need to remember to put that back. That's going to be pretty important. But uh, just to get the thread started on this, I'm going to get it out of the way. And now before I put the buffer detent in back here, I need to make sure that I put this spring back where I got it. Here comes one of those commonly launched parts. I won't say that I've never, okay, yeah, I have done this, but uh, you just drop the spring in that hole, detent goes right here, and then I'm going to have to hold this down while I make my final revolution with the buttstock right here, and then it should hold that in place all by itself. We'll see how well this goes. And I do have to watch out for that little spring that I have on the underside. Okay, so I need to make it one more revolution. I'm going to go ahead and back up the castle nut as far as it'll go. Okay, and that's it right there. I just need to complete this revolution and this little detent will be held in place. Again, I need to watch out for this little spring right under here. Okay, that is pretty much it. Now I just have to make sure that spring is neatly in place. Push this little retention tab all the way forward. So that's going to hold that spring on the underside in place. And then and make sure that the, the buttstock remains nice and upright. Finger tight on the castle nut for now, and that should do it. That all feels pretty good. So now it's just time to take the wrench and tighten this down. And I'm just gonna check my, oh, there we go. There's the takedown pin. This should be retained, yes, by the little detent. So it seems like everything went as planned. That should do it. I'm about to install the most difficult part on this whole build, which is the front takedown pin or pivot pin. These things are a real pain in the neck. Uh, if you've never done one of these before, get prepared to swear a whole lot. Uh, this little spring is gonna go in this hole right here. And then this has to go in here with this little detent right over the top. And then this needs to go in. It's a horrible juggling act. There are special tools made for this. If you look up tutorials online, you can also see how to use a clevis pin. I could swear that I had a clevis pin around here to do this and I can't find it. So I'm gonna do this the really nasty way. I'm going to do this in a carpeted area, pointing downward. I'm not gonna do it in here because I know I'm gonna launch this at least once. This is why an oops kit exists. 
Here's the nearly completed lower. We have everything in place, including the buffer and buffer tube back there. The only thing that we're missing is the trigger guard right here. And I, I do have the trigger guard, but I forgot to order one of the roll pins that goes with it. I thought that it might come in the package. So I'm gonna have to wait to get a roll pin, but aside from that, this is good to go. Upper time, this is an Anderson $40 upper I got a long time ago, and we're going to be finishing it out with the CMMG upper completion kit. All of these parts could use a little lube. There we go. That'll work around the spring. Roll pin, let's get a little bit on there. There we go. The first part I'll install is the roll pin right here. It, I'm gonna drive it in from the bottom just in case I mar some surface. I don't want it to be on the top. And then I'm gonna use just an old 38 special case because I don't have a brass hammer with me right now. And you can see that I have this little piece of plywood under here. Okay. There we go, that's partly installed. But this little piece of plywood right here is gonna take up that gap right there. So I'm not just bouncing this around, I'm pushing right down onto the surface and it has something to catch it. So now for the next feat of juggling, I need to install this and have it all the way depressed in and hold that in place while driving in this pin right here. There we go, at least the pin is holding everything in place so I can finish driving it all the way in. And we'll use a roll pin punch to push it in just a tiny bit more so the two sides are equal. Okay, that should do it. And here's the last juggling act, the door. There it is. You can see I put the long end right there, short end up here so it doesn't actually stick out into the, uh, the port right here. Yeah, that should pop open nicely. Now this right here is going to be retained by the barrel nut. It's loose right now, so don't accidentally knock it out and throw your springs everywhere, but this is gonna go on next. Now the work gets easier, but more critical. If you want ultimate accuracy, supposedly if you put some kind of epoxy or like a red Loctite on here, the one that uh, does not come off except with great heat, um, this might be a good chance to do that. Since this is a rifle that I may play with later, maybe come up with a different chambering like 6.5 Grendel or something, I'm just gonna leave it as is, but we do need some grease on these threads. We're installing the ATI Strike Force handguard back here, and it does come with this barrel nut. This is a little bit different than the standard. This does not use uh, any of the dimensions that you're used to on one of your armorer's wrenches, but it looks like it is sized to fit the uh, the wrench right here for the castle nut on the uh, on the buffer tube at the back. So I think we can use this to crank it around. Now these are threaded, and I would need to be careful that I'm not damaging these. But I think this should work. I just need to crank this down to at least 30 pound feet. And then we can go a good bit higher than that, maxed out at 80. That's looking just about right. We can put those screws on later, but first we have to come back in, put on the gas block and all that good stuff. The underside of the CMMG barrel has a little dimple right there to help you set the position of the rear set screw, and I can actually see straight through the hole right there to see where this goes. I'm going to apply just a little bit of blue Loctite to the threads on this so that it doesn't accidentally back out. 
And one of the things that you can do to ensure good accuracy from some of the things that I've been reading is to make sure that the gas tube on the underside is kind of free floated going into the action. It doesn't have any, any extraordinary pressure on any sides of the, the wall going in there. And if this is set just the way that I have it right now, then there is just a little bit of wiggle room in each direction. So I think this gas tube is perfectly set up and I won't need to bend anything. And that's a nice little plus. Time to install the handguard using these screws right here and some Loctite. This should be timed out really neatly right now so that this is going to remain level all the way across. I did my best to eyeball this and get the, uh, the level on the action back at the back and then the act, uh, on the, uh, the, guard, the hand guard right here. So this should remain level all the way across. Here's the CMMG bolt carrier group. I've already lubed this up with the Modern Spartan Accuracy Oil. And then I'm gonna do the same to the charging handle right here. This is also a CMMG, a uh, nice tactical latch with huge wings on there. This is gonna be really easy to grab. Feels a little bit grainy right now. Eventually it'll wear in. And actually as the oil is going over the surface, it feels a whole lot better already. This was pretty dusty, uh, the upper was, uh, sitting in my closet for a while. But yeah, eventually this will break in and get nice and smooth. I still need to attach a muzzle device, but I just can't help it. I wanna see how it all feels together. So far, all the various components by themselves feel ridiculously lightweight. Okay, we have some wiggle between the two receivers. Uh, this is a CMMG lower and an Anderson upper, and they're bound to not be exactly perfectly tight. I have some products that we can use to uh, take up that gap right there. And of course, we don't, uh, we still don't have that, uh, that trigger guard right there. Oh, oh yeah. <laughs> this is extremely light. Yeah. It will take a little while for that to break in. It just feels, it just feels gritty. We're gonna have to rub some of that phosphating off on the inside, kind of wear it smooth a little bit. Go ahead and flip it into semi, and here's the trigger. Watch this. Nice. Very lightweight. Now for the muzzle device. This is a YHM brake, a very effective one that I've tested on my other AR-15. And this is one that needs to be timed. You can see that this is also an attachment for my silencer. But yeah, I'm gonna have to uh, time this out. I have some washers already in place that should get me to the correct position and torque. Now for wingdings, doodads, nernies, and greeblies. I'm gonna put this little guy on the front right here. This is actually the back of the rail. This is going to be my quick detach sling attachment right here. It's just a tiny little thing. This actually feels like some kind of flimsy plastic, but no, this is aluminum. It's just so lightweight, there's so little to it. And this is gonna be just great out here on the end of this rifle, which is gonna get kind of heavy anyway. Uh, so yeah, this is M-Lock attachment. The rail that we got, the ATI Strike Force, is M-Lock all the way around except at the top where it is Picatinny. And we do have some other parts that we can put on here later if we do want to go with maybe a, um, a Picatinny attachment for a bipod or a, a sling swivel stud, that kind of thing. 
But for now, this is gonna be great right here. And then we also have a socket on the butt stock for the other end of the sling. I've installed the trigger guard roll pin, so here's the final product. This rifle feels even better than it looks. It, and I think it just looks amazing. I love the, the way that this comes across. All the skeletonizing up here, all the matching tans going back through, uh, all the furniture back here. Yeah, I love the way it looks and the way that this feels is just wonderful. The balance is excellent. It's really quick to point around. And with this really slim uh, forearm up here, you can pick any kind of hand grip you want. No need for any special little doodads out here, vertical grips or anything like that. Thumb over bore is excellent. Choking up on the back feels great. And you can see that the one thing that we're missing overall is any kind of sighting system. I'm using the iron sights on the Banshee right now for testing, so I'll be putting those on here in a little bit. Uh, and then the scope, the Nikon, I did try the highest rings that I had. These are extra high weaver rings, and they weren't quite tall enough for me to really consistently get my eyeball behind the scope. So we're gonna have to go with a standard AR style mount with its extra high saddle height. I think it's like um, 26 millimeters or something like that. Uh, pretty high saddle height and that's gonna work out great. And I can't tell you what mount we're going to use yet because it is actually uh, not released yet. We're gonna be testing out a brand new uh, product that's gonna be out on the market right around SHOT Show time. And it's gonna, it's gonna look really neat and it's also going to provide some really cool features that are gonna be perfect for this rifle. I'm really excited about it. Now, one of the things that I must mention, getting this rail, getting the forearm, uh, level with the rail up here on top of the action. That was a little bit tricky, working that back and forth uh, to try to get that barrel nut at the exact right timing and then get everything screwed down. But in the end, I totally nailed it. It took me about, oh, I don't know, four or five tries. I just kind of had the hang hand guard hanging out on the front, turn it just a little bit more, get the, uh, the screws in place, and now this is ready to go. So if we do mount either the iron sights up front or the, the scope that's gonna be mounted actually on the hand guard uh, instead of back here on the action. Yeah, it's gonna be perfectly level. We won't have to worry about anything uh, there. And now we are gonna be doing all kinds of testing with this gun. Make sure that you subscribe, like, hit the notification bell, and uh, yeah, just make sure that you check back in on this project because I want to uh, really try to figure out what the best sighting system overall is for this rifle in different situations. We're going to be testing out irons on here, some really excellent iron sights from Ultradyne. We're going to test a forward mounted scope. We're going to test a rearward mounted low power variable optic back here. And then we're also going to test out a red dot. So we'll have a red dot back here and we'll try a red dot a little further out front, kind of in that scout position as well. I wanna see what I think, uh, you know, Jeff Cooper had the idea that he wanted a wide field of view around his scope and maybe a smaller field of view through it in order to get on target quickly. And we're gonna put it to the test. We're gonna have several of us shooters and we're gonna see which one works out best for us. See if we can come to any kind of consensus or if it's just a personal thing. And I think it's gonna be a really fascinating set of tests. Make sure you stick around. Thanks to patrons of the Destructive Arts for providing uh, the support to keep this project coming. If you wanna chip in a buck or two a month to help produce these videos, I'll put a link to Patreon. And thanks especially to Sportsman's Guide at the 338 Lapua Magnum level and uh, Peter at the 300 Win Mag level. Let's go see what this rifle can do. Thanks for watching. If you liked this video, be sure to like, share, and most importantly, subscribe. Even if you didn't like this particular content, go ahead and subscribe. There's probably something coming that's more up your alley. Check out this playlist right here. This is going to have videos in a similar vein to what you just watched. These two videos we cherry picked for you. And finally, The Social Regressive is on Patreon. So you can become a patron of the Destructive Arts and earn some goodies while helping us to provide high quality videos just by kicking us a few bucks a month. Thanks a bunch for your patronage.